a grant uh, from the Virginia Board for Persons with Disabilities. We, we will play those two videos in a few minutes. First, I want to talk a bit about our voices, who we are, what we do, and why we are excited about learning how to use video to activate our self-advocacy efforts. Our Voices is a group of self-advocates who live independently in our own apartments with the support from Hopa. We believe that all people with disabilities are entitled to lives of our own design. With the support we need to make that a reality. Our Voices launched in 2006 and currently has 17 members representing the 125 people profile support. We use our voices to promote true and complete inclusion for people with disabilities. We do that by speaking out to local, state, and national issues affecting people with disabilities. We are excited about finding our voices in video because in my opinion, video speaks louder than the written paper because with video, people can actually see for themselves what we are advocating for. People with disabilities can and are active members of the same community that people without disabilities live, work, and play. And as you will see, this project has helped people with disabilities stay connected, learn, and engage during the COVID-19 pandemic. Joining me today are several Our Voices colleagues who were involved in the project. Michelle Brown, James Burney, Reed Eden, Grace Fizio, Daniel John, Keisha Turner. Our project co-producer and video host, Calvin Burkhardt. Also joining us is Ray Pearson, Hope House, Legis legislative liaison who will facilitate a panel discussion with our self advocates. You will have an opportunity to hear from them shortly. First, here they are finding our voices in video. themselves further apart, I'd like to introduce you to uh, some people that are actually getting closer to friends and meeting more people than ever. Since we've been in this pandemic, we've been using technology more and we've been able to meet more people. Because more people are reaching out for having these hangout meetings. This is the Hangout. Welcome. It's great to see everybody. It's a weekly get together that started since the pandemic hit. We joined 
and by using our computers while we are staying safe in our apartment. Before we were just me once a month, that would mean seven times a month. Hey, Grace. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. We chat about like ways to stay safe during the pandemic. We do like talent shows. Get to meet with my friends and see everyone's talents in a unique way or skills. I get to hear other views and opinions of advocacy and stuff that's going on in the disability community. If you are going through a little depressed or oppressed or sadness, it's something that keeps a smile on your face and a laugh. They also like to um, share their, um, of course, paintings, talk about their hobbies, what they like to do. I enjoy being on here with my friend, with my friends on on Zoom, um, because I am one of one of the peer advocate. I think we should continue to hang out. If I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing now, even after the COVID-19 is over. I was like, people from Nebraska. I, I was getting excited. Because it was different people from Nebraska, Massachusetts, Jersey. I was like, wow. I, I always wanted to uh, to host something. I wanted to try to have my little Zoom room hangout called The Gathering. Let your voice be heard. Okay, and we have one more that we'll play. Technical difficulties, hang on just a quick second. And there we go. Oops, let me do this again. And let me go again. Okay. Alan Burkhart, and I'm glad to introduce you to a few friends who will share five quick ideas for having fun and learning new things while staying safe in these unusual times. When times get tough, we get creative. But I have autism and I make fishing lures. I just saw it on YouTube and I saw people making them on YouTube and I said, I can make those. I enjoy making them and I sell them at two stores. I start with this. It's a bottle cap punch. You gotta line up the holes the right way so they're not off to the side or anything. And then I just look through the hole and see the other side and see if it's straight or not. Then after I put this in, I put one of these on, split rings, and then you split ring pliers. And then I put a hook on. And this is what it looks after I'm done. vegetable garden. I wanted to try it for myself because I never planted my garden before. It's my own and I can come out and get one and I can have it with my meals. 
learning how to do my own planting, learning how to soil it, to feed the plants and everything and water it. I plant cucumbers, tomatoes, and peppers that you can put into like a stir fry. That's amazing to have your own garden and doing it yourself. I haven't picked up a paintbrush in a long time. What hold me back was because my blindness. I know it been years, but it felt good to pick up a paintbrush. The colors of an abstract changes people's moods. Instead of making all my paints abstract, I wanted to have something different in there, like a moon. I enjoy what I do. I'm hoping that one day I will be selling my paintings at the Stockley Gardens art show. If I can do it, you can do it too. I just started asking asking my staff to go get beads for me. Some of them I made them for little girls. Some of them I made the, the ear, the piece for your finger, a bracelet. This one I got around my neck. This is like a rubber band, but I have to use a lot of beads to keep it, to keep it up. When I do them, I have to stay concentrate on everything, what colors I'm using. It'll be like a week or two by the time I finish everything. It's good, it's gonna keep me, keep me busy. I also like to make videos of myself playing my guitar. This gives me an audience so I can share my talent. I make a video. I set up the computer by going to the camera. Then I turn on my amplifier. And I get my guitar. And then I click on this icon, the camera icon, and start playing. persons. I am legislative liaison. I'm asking you to make a donation right now oh, before the official sorry, FEC excuse deadline. Me, real quick. And if you do, it will be triple matched. Experts. From Nate Silver's 538 to the Cook political. Ah, go away. All right. <laughs> it happens. It's okay. <laughs> Those All videos right. just keep going. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, I'm Gray Persons, legislative liaison with Hope House Foundation, and, um, and I'm going to facilitate a bit of a, a panel discussion. Wanted to get started uh, by introducing um, our co-producer, Calvin Burkhardt. Um, Calvin, can you introduce yourself to the audience, please? Hi, my name is Calvin Burkhardt. Um, I live in my own apartment with support from Hope House Foundation. I am in our Voices of Africa and a co-producer of both the, the, the videos you just saw. As co-producer, it was my job to work with Gray to figure out what stories to tell in the videos, as well as how to put the videos together. Before we get into our panel discussion, a bit more about the project. The first objective was to have people supported by Hope House staying safe and having fun. Me personally, I was able to help stay connected through the use of Zoom and other apps and we wanted to make sure other people supported by Hope House were aware of the same opportunities. To do that, it was important the project gave people supported by Hope House having something fun to do. While learning new things during COVID, we wanted to help people stay positive. 
Finally, we wanted to explore how to make our own self-advocacy videos so Hope House and our, our supporters can make even more self-advocacy opportunities in the future. So we can connect our voices to more of the people that we wanted to, want to reach. Our challenges, there are 125 people supported by Hope House. We each live in our own apartments and we have li lived all over the re region of several hundred square miles. How could the, the project involve everyone who wanted to take part in a short time? Here's what we came up with and how we created the video you just saw. First, while people supported by Hope House live all over the place, we are all supported by staff that's divided into 15 teams. Each team is supported eight teams in a region, so we work through the teams. Second, we provided staff members at each team a list of questions to ask in the individuals supported by through Hope House. That wanted to be part of this project. Those conversations were then recorded on <laughs> Staff submitted those clips to me and Gray, our legislative liaison, and we worked together to develop a story. We then worked with a videographer to edit the clips in a way that tells the story. Lastly, self-advocates appearing in the vinyl videos each receive a stipend for their effort. At this point, the project is funded by the board. We have finished the first two of the six videos. Over 25 people supported by Hope House submitted over 40 clips. The excitement has spread advocacy and our voices is as popular as focus as ever. Great. Thank you so much, Calvin. Um, and, uh, and it's been a great project and you've done a fantastic job of, um, of working with the other self-advocates and with our video producer to, to develop those. Um, next, uh, next what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to talk a bit with, uh, with six of the folks that took part in actually starring in these videos and telling the stories. Um, we've each sort of discussed a few questions so that we could each prepare. And, uh, and to get us started, Daniel, um, how about uh, introducing yourself to the audience? I am Daniel Dunn. I live at the Hope House Foundation in Ocean View, in the Northwest section of Ocean View. And, and how long have you lived uh, independently uh, with support? Five years. That's great, Daniel. So, um, so uh, you know, none of us had made videos before this. Um, what was it that made you decide you wanted to participate in this project? To get my to get my story out about my doing, and to um, tell people about my job. Great. All right. Thank, thanks so much, Daniel. And um, I'm curious now. You know, we're using Skype right now. Uh, pardon me. We're using Zoom right now. We're we've been using technology a lot. You know, how have the videos and technology, this project and technology, helped you to keep connected? with the world and, uh, and, and focus during the pandemic. It keeps me connected with my family. It keeps me connected with my um, self-advocacy group. And it keeps me connected with other people. Great, thanks so much, Daniel. Um, Grace, Grace, can you go ahead and introduce yourself to, uh, to the audience? Are you there, Grace? Yeah. I I'm here. I'm Grace Bigel. I I live in in my, in my own apartment. I like I like balloons. Really high. And how long have you lived there, Grace? Um, I for about four, four, four years. Awesome. So, Grace, why the heck did you decide you wanted to be a part of this project? Because I, I, I want to teach people that they, even though they have a disability, they can still live on their on their own. Wonderful, thank you so much, Grace. Um, Michelle, Michelle, can you introduce yourself? 
Michelle, looks like you're uh, looks like you're muted. There you go. Okay. Michelle Brown, and I've been in the Hope House for eight years. And uh, wonderful, thank you, Michelle. And so you live independently in your own apartment, huh? Yes. Great. And Michelle, uh, Michelle, why did you decide that you wanted to be a part of this video project? I wanted to do I wanted I wanted to learn how to do videos. Yeah, and, and keep people keep people together. Keep people together. That's great, Michelle. And uh, and how has uh, how's this project helped you to stay connected through the pandemic? It, it helps me to be online with other, with other people and stay stay close, stay stay focused a lot. Excellent. Thank you so much, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Mr. Reed Eaton, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Reed Eaton, and I'm part of our voices and part of the group that help with the video. Great, Reed. And um, what made you decide that you wanted to participate in this project? <clears throat> After seeing another state do a video project like ours during our voices meeting, I felt like if they, they could do it, then we could do it as well as making a difference in other people's lives. It unites us and makes us stronger together. Awesome, Reed. And, um, and how has this, uh, how have you been using technology and how's the project helped you to stay connected? <clears throat> Through Technology via my new laptop, the team tablet that I'm using now, and my iPhone, I've been able to communicate and have conversations with people in Hope House Foundation and uh, other similar organizations to Hope House Foundation and other states. And by doing the video project you all just viewed earlier in this session, as well as make a difference in other people's lives with disabilities everywhere in Virginia and beyond and the USA with our voices. That, that's great, Reed, because I know that um, you've also been participating in some other advocacy uh, groups other than our voices, haven't you? Um, currently or in the past? No, oh, like currently during the pandemic, just using all this technology. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, Reed. And uh, Ms. Keisha, Ms. Keisha, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Keisha Turner. I lived in Hope House for 16 years. Thanks, Keisha. And you, you, you're also living independently in an apartment, is that right? Yes, sir. All right. Great. I, um, thanks so much, Keisha. Now, Keisha, um, you've been a big part of the project. You you've done a lot in the Hangouts. What, what made you decide that you wanted to be a part of this? Well, I plan to participate in the video presentation because I wanted to show people that they could still have fun doing the things they like while they were quarantined in their homes. I was hoping that showing them what I was doing will motivate them to try to do it too. And how has it helped keep you connected, being a part of this project and, and using technology? The videos gave me a chance to see what my friends were doing during this pandemic. Technology has helped me stay connected because I rarely use my laptop. Now I use my laptop for my advocacy meeting and to video chat with my friends to catch up and check in with one another from time to time. I also use my laptop to shop 
for decorations for my apartments and DoorDash. I have learned to download apps for my laptop each day. I am getting better with using it. I'm going to go off script here for a minute. Let me just ask you, how important would you say that technology has been to you and to the rest of people in our voices to stay connected? Has it been really important? Yes. Yeah. Um, you and, and you know, had you ever made videos before this? No. Were you nervous about it or did you just want to jump right in? I, I was nervous. Yeah. And I want to jump it right into it. There you go. Well, thank you so much, Keisha. Thank you so much for that. Um, You're welcome. Mr. James Burney, can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Hello. My name is James Burney. I've been living in my apartment for 15 years. Great, Mr. Burney. Uh, and I, I call you Mr. Burney, of course, uh, James. Um, Mr. Burney, what the heck made you decide that you wanted to be a part of this project? The reason why I wanted to participate in the video project because I wanted other people to see what I was doing and how I was keeping myself busy and active and safe in my apartment since the pandemic. Had you ever used Zoom before all this? Never used Zoom before. You using Zoom a little bit these days? Huh? Are you using Zoom some these days? Yes. Uh, like Bizarre Tech, the Hangout. So, so how has this technology helped you to stay connected? How important has it been for you to stay connected during this pandemic? The sense of technology has helped me stay connected a whole lot with friends, family, relatives, and loved ones. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Bernie. Uh, I'd like to ask that same question to uh, Ms. Grace Fiesel. Grace, how, has tech, how important has technology been to you and how has it helped you to stay connected? And how did this project help you stay connected? It helped me stay connected because of of because of technology for one and for two I've been doing something and I have met people around the world that I would have met without without the technology without the technology. And so many people probably haven't heard of, of don't know what SARTAC is. Can you, SARTAC is, an, is, an, is an, an, a national uh, organization that facilitates a different advocacy group. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much, Grace. Um, Welcome. Michelle, how do you think that this experience, uh, do you think that this experience will be will sort of change the way that you do things and change your life after this, this project? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, it made, it made me, it made, it, it, it changed me to do different things for other people and try to stay focused all the time and try to use, use my computer and stuff that I need to, to do on it. Did you use your computer much before before uh, this project and before the pandemic? No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't had a computer. I didn't know how to use a computer at first, but and now I know how. That's man. That's fantastic, Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much for. Um, for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Daniel, how about you? 
how do you, what, what sort of uh, impact will this experience have on your life after the pandemic? It will, will. Oh, it, um, it helped me, it helped me learn how to use my technology better where I can be independent when I, when I need to read. I have my computer read to me. I have my tablet read to me and I have my, I, my phone read to me when I need stuff to be read to me. Thank you, Daniel. So it sounds like this project and using the technology sort of has helped you to get to know that technology a lot more. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Keisha, what, what impact uh, will this experience have on you after this, this pandemic is all over? After the pandemic, this experience has shown me that I am able to stay connected to family and friends, even without visiting them face to face. It has shown me how relationships are to me are to me and that can we can still have close contact using technology versus just being able to speak on the phone. I am able to still attend meetings and advocate for others with, with disability and myself. I also learned that there is so much fun and creative things I can do to stay busy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Keisha. Um, you, uh, we, what, you've been doing a lot of painting also, and I know that, um, that you've really gotten creative during, during this whole pandemic. Thanks so much for sharing your experience. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Grace, what's the, what's the impact that this experience will have on you after this project is all over? Hopefully, hopefully, I will stay connected with my friends that I met around the world, even after the pandemic is over by the technology. And I'm going to go out on a limb, Grace, because I know, I've heard you talk about this in the past, but would you say that you have are even more busy these days than you were before? Yes, that's why you... That's why you been technology because I I I also I also go to school on the internet too, so it's like combined it. Great. Thank you so much, Grace. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Uh Reed Eaton. How would you yeah. say would will this uh experience have Pardon me. What impact will this experience have on you after the project's over and after the pandemic? I realize I'm more capable now since the pandemic to communicate with others and person and online through technology. I hope to do future videos through our voices and maybe even become a co-producer on short films and upcoming projects for Zoom. Thanks, Reed. Thanks very much. Um, and finally, Mr. Bernie. Can you yes. Do you, how do you see this project and this experiencing impacting your life after the, beyond the pandemic? Well, I... Uh, see it as, uh, for me, I'm going to continue on using the devices that I have, even when the corona outbreak is over, I'm still going to use it because it's still going to be helpful to me and also to a a lot of other people who decides to want to continue to use it after the pandemic is over. I'm not going to just put it up and put it away. I'm going to continue to use it because you never know 
what's going to happen next. So it's good for us to continue to use it, to use it, not abuse it, but to use it to the best of our ability. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Bernie. I appreciate it very much. Um, so th that's that really concludes uh, the the discussion that we had prepared and that we had discussed. Tanya, is there anything any anything that came in through the chat box or? Uh, yeah, a lot of comments, a lot of incredible compliments for sure. That y'all, these videos uh, videos are great. Um, seeing what you're doing at home with your art and and gardening and things like that people are just feeling really inspired and a lot of comments about agreeing that technology is the way people are staying connected and that's true for that's true for everyone so I think this is um, we've seen that again and again in the convention it's been a theme that's come up over and over is that people with disabilities are just like everyone else connecting through technology now and so a question that does come into the box is into the chat box is did any of you have trouble uh getting funds or money to pay for devices like your laptops your computers how you were how you were doing these things was that an issue and if so how did y'all overcome that Analysts? Do you want me to answer that? Sure. Yeah, that would be great. Um, um I have, I have, I have a G, I have a GV waiver and they pay for a lot of my technology. You have a DD waiver and they paid for a lot of, okay, of your devices. Good. Yes. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Um, and if anybody else has questions they want to put in the chat box or raise your hand, uh, virtually raise your hand or physically. Um, Gray, if you'll watch for physicals, <laughs> I'll watch for the, the virtual ones. Uh, I do. I think that it's important that this continues. A uh, wonderful comment. We are delighted to be able to fund this great project and look forward to working with Hope House on future videos. That's actually from the Virginia board. So that's wonderful to hear. We Are there other topics of videos that we can expect to see in the future? Uh, Daniel, we're working on one now. What are we working on? That vote. That, yeah, getting out, get out the vote video. Yes. And we're focusing on three issues that people with disabilities should be looking at that we got through the arc. Can, can you think of what those are? Medicaid. Yeah. Medicaid, there's Social Security. Security and jobs for fair pay. Real jobs for fair pay, that's right. So we've got to get out the vote video, and then we've also got one on assistive technology, a part of yeah, assistive technology, and the way that um, that people use that to ha have more independence in their lives. So those are two, and then um, and then we'll have two more, and um, and I'm definitely going to be stepping back from the project as much as possible, and, and it may be interesting to engage with the alliance on what issues are, uh, the alliance are going to be focused on. That may uh, that may work well for the alliance and our voices. Oh, that's right. I think that would be great. Um, where will people be able to view as your future videos come out? Um, we will make those available. Certainly, we're going to be pushing them out through Facebook. Um, we'll also would like to uh, make those available to you, Tanya, uh, through the Arc. Um, we they're they're on uh, they're on YouTube right now. So um, uh, I'm, 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 this is all new to all of us. We had never done anything like this. Um, our voices hadn't, hadn't done anything like this in the past. So we're sort of learning how to make these searchable and findable, but, but they are on YouTube. 
Well, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Sure. Does anybody else have questions or comments that they'd like to make? If you just raise your hand, uh, we can call on you. I see a gentleman in a, a maroon uh, shirt who's uh, listed as iPhone. Oh, oh, uh, oh, I see who you're talking about. Uh, Jamie Carter. I think. You should be able to unmute yourself now. Okay. Go ahead, Jamie. And I can't swear that I could have the wrong Me? name. Yes, you go ahead, iPhone. <laughs> oh, that's me. Yes. Um, so what's this topic about? So the topic was really um, just that uh, the objective was to show, um, was to provide the world with advice on how to stay connected and engaged during the pandemic when we're all stuck at home. I, I connect, I connect via Zoom. Awesome. That's excellent. That is a perfect example. Thank you for that. Looks Lily? Like, you're welcome. Thank you. Looks like Lily has a question. Hey guys. Um, I do have actually two questions. Number one, um, how, how is Hope House, how is, how is Hope House dealing with the pandemic? And then, like, are they, are they allowed visitors or are they under, in lockdown? And who, are you guys going to allow other people, are you guys going to allow other people to be a part of these videos besides, do you allow other people to be a part of these videos besides the people in Hope House? Does, does that make sense? Can I answer that time? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, um, from where I live at, which is in Chesapeake, where I live at, which is in Chesapeake, we can um do anything we can do. We want to do like there's staff to come in to check on us on occasions, um help us make dinner, uh ask us what we want for dinner, and um we can go from there during the pandemic. I. Some people go to church um, online. Some go. Some go in uh, by um, par the parking lot, the church parking lot with the van. We just do a lot of things. Does that answer your question, Lily? Correction, Lily. Um, we had to still wear masks when we're outside, or if we have guests work in our apartment, they have to wear masks. Like um, Asia, my uh, my CSC is wearing a mask right now, and also we gotta meet guests outside, and we 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 haven't really gone in any outings or any like things we usually do. I've barely been allowed to go to the gym. When I do, I have to wear a mask and I have to get my temperature checked and all that at the gym, at the Y, so yeah. Can, can Dorothy, thank you, Reed. Dorothy, you've got your hand up. Why, why don't you, I think you could probably speak to that. I do have a visitor that comes to me on Saturdays. We just make sure that when we go somewhere, we wear our masks. And we social distance. It's a it's a friend of mine I see regularly. It attends my church. I do get to go to my church to the actual building. The church building is social distancing. We wear our masks. And, that's, and again, when I go to like PT or the crisis pregnancy center, they check my temperature 
So we're pretty much doing things, not everything, but we are doing this in both places. And are your staff, are your staff just your staff or do they go to other facilities? And if so, how are the staff, how, how is the staff staying protected to keep the individuals that they're serving protected? Um, the staff work in, uh, oh. in other girls in and out of apartments. But um, they wear a mask when they come in, into people's in and out of our apartment. And then they social distance when they can. Sometimes they have to do things close to us. But we pretty much have the same staff on a regular basis. So we don't run into that where there's a whole bunch of different people. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, guys. The, I think that the Hope House staff, and I, I, I'm not Hope House support, I'm legislative liaison. Hope House support it works hard to do, be as safe as anybody else. We do not lock anybody down. Everybody lives in their own apartment, makes their own choices. Um, we don't tell anybody what to do. Nobody at Hope House tells people what to do. People live their lives and, and we, our job is to help people live lives. Um, you asked about uh, other people being in videos, and that's going to be up to our voices. Um, we had to, we got this funding on May 21st is when the funding was approved by the Virginia Board. We had a deadline of creating two videos and presenting those videos at this convention. That was a big, fast deadline. So we had to get to work rapidly to shoot video, get it to a, uh, a videographer, go through the various rounds to make sure that it was something that people would want to watch. Um, now that we know how to do it, that money is going to be, th this project definitely moves far more under our voices, the, the self-advocacy group, to think about what issues are most important to our voices and how we can tell the stories through our voices that will um, help push those issues forward. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Sure. Paul, you have your hand up? Yes, I have a question for Greg. Greg, have you connected with the other Hope Houses? Again, Chesterfield and Richmond with this video as well? Um, good question, Paul. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, with those Hope Houses. Um, they're probably, they, we probably share a name. I know that if you Google Hope House, there are like a whole bunch of Hope Houses that come up. Okay. Um, and we're, we're independent out of Southampton Roads in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake. And, and, and just to be clear, we're not a house. We, we provide support for people in their houses. Um, so, uh, so good question, Paul. And we wanna get this video out to as many people in America and in Virginia that will, are willing to see it. So we're gonna be pushing this out in as many different ways as we possibly can. Okay, because I got connections through Chesterfield through Hope House, actually. That's awesome, Paul. Um, I'll tell you what, I am going to put my uh, email in the chat box, and anybody who wants to get information on how to see these, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Sure. Hey, Keisha. Excellent. Well, I think I can um, safely speak for everyone. I say that you all did just an amazing job and the videos are wonderful and your advocacy, your self-advocacy group is such an integral part of Virginia. You have been a long-standing self-advocacy group and we're thrilled that you're part of the statewide alliance um, and that you, your liaison uh, board member is, is Jesse, who sits on the statewide alliance for you. And so we're just really happy to partner and we'll be thrilled to share these videos far and wide and, as well as, and we'll look forward to your future ones. And we at the Ark of Virginia, we've been hearing it constantly. And I think we've heard it throughout convention that people with disabilities are, they want to stay connected on technology. We need and have a responsibility to make sure people have access to technology and we have a responsibility to also advocate with the state to ensure that formal supports, not just these informal things that we're all doing the way we're connecting now, 
um, is going forward, but also services and supports through the DD waiver are allowed to be done virtually. So that's something we all need to advocate for. So quick announcement, I'll just add how many folks are coming to the dance tonight. I have our closeout, woohoo, thank you Reed. Yeah, Charlotte, lots of people. We're gonna have prizes and DJ Captain Kirk, um, I always have to think about that, is gonna provide all of our music and we're just gonna have a good time seeing each other online and dancing and talking to friends. We, if you did get a, a convention t-shirt, feel free to wear that uh and your party beads that we sent to you but i, I look forward to seeing everyone if people want to unmute here at the end and kind of say hi to each other uh and, and maybe give like a big round of applause to to our panel for their incredible work on these videos love it hi paul hi Roy. Yeah, hey, Lily, I'm sorry, were you saying something? Yeah. My mom and I um, ordered two, I we ordered two t-shirts. We had only received one t-shirt. Well, yeah, there certainly were, um, not everyone received a t-shirt. We made, we tried very hard to get those out to as many folks as possible. Okay. Um, so if you didn't get one, we're sorry about that. When supplies ran out, supplies ran right. out. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Um, and, and there is a session at what two o'clock today? Two o'clock is the last, uh, the last session. Yes, that's uh, <laughs> Jonathan Martinez continuing to talk about supported decision making. Uh -huh. This is part two, so we'll go into a little more detail. So I'll be excited to see you all there. Um, what's Can I say um, something? Yeah. Well, I was trying to go. Sean was going. Sorry, Sean. Go ahead. All I was going to say was I am looking forward to seeing everyone tonight at our virtual dance party. I had a dry run uh, at our self advocacy summit, and it was awesome. And I am looking forward to partying, partying with you guys, and really celebrating 65 years of great advocacy. Even though we're far apart, you're going to feel like you're together in the room, like you would be at the convention. So. You know what? I need to say one last thing. I completely forgot. So I didn't want to do the poll the same way as last time for lots of reasons. Um, so I've just put in the chat box a form. If you can all, so it's all in one place. If you don't mind, while we're still on here, take a moment. And I'm sorry, Gray, I almost forgot this completely. Um, this is the survey I mentioned in the beginning. And our funders, our federal partners, uh, ask a few questions about you as an attendee, and then we ask about your satisfaction. Give us some feedback on the session. That helps our panelists for when they do other presentations. So it's the last thing in the chat box. It's from me. You can click directly on your screen, and that's going to open up another box. And you can fill that out for me, and I can watch to see how that's going. I'm there you go. Oh, yeah. I know. Oh, okay. Ms. Hunter, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. It's We've got Prince, 10 minutes. Go ahead. You know my area where I live, like in Prince William, is that like a town or like not a city or I'm not sure if it's rural or if it's like urban. Oh, I don't know. Lucy Cantrell, tell her what you think. Okay, and I will email the form to those um if I think they, I heard it was rural, so I don't know, but I'm just gonna put that on there. That'll be fine, out. honey. That'll okay. be absolutely fine. Um, can we? Would it be possible to get to have a um directory of everyone's every all the um hosts, all of the hosts' emails, um, where we where like in in the future if we need to get some get somebody information on it or if we need to. Mm -hmm. to <clears throat> I information on it or it not or like like if we're navigators or for people that need need to give people resources and people to talk to about mm -hmm. some of the items that we have discussed here is there any way to get a directory of of all these emails and contact information. 
So not for attendees, um, those aren't public, but for all the panelists, for all the sessions, and this answers Angela's question in the chat box also, um, by tonight, um, all the session, well, and I should say by the end of the weekend, they'll all be there, but the sessions, the presenters are providing us with their slides. Those will be on convention website and the recordings from every session are on the convention website or will be under on demand. There's a probably, I don't know, 10 videos there already. Um, so I'm working to get them, um, fixed and uploaded to YouTube. So those will be there for you to see. And most people on their slides, presenters put their contact information. So Lily, you will be able to see contact info for presenters uh, from there. And the items will stay on the convention website for two weeks. So you can go back and you can look at sessions and you can look at slides and you'll have the access to the video uh, I'm sorry, the movies as well. I just, and um, um, one, one of the concerns was you can only watch the, the videos once. What? It would be, oh. For the reason I jumped, yes, that movie is a one time code to, to uh, pass to that movie. We are one of the very early screenings. Um, they have not had many. So, so yes, that is a one time. Uh, watch so you do want to watch it when you have time to do so uh, I'm gonna put the link in the chat box again for the survey if you will please click that and Ooh, fill well, that out well He's on I, the ball guys he's on the ball she gets a raise after this weekend hmm has anyone cl clicked it and having any problems no I have no problem Hey, Tanya, I have a question about the reason I jumped, which is Alexis. Okay. So, I was reading on there, I haven't clicked the link yet, but mm -hmm. I was reading that you only have five days to watch it upon your initial clicking of the link. Yes. And I was wondering, do I have to put the code in before the, before the convention ends in mm -hmm. order to be able to watch it, or can I come no. back to oh that's a good point that's a great question no you can come back when you know you've got that five day window um yeah so it for two weeks it will be up there okay great thank you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tanya yes i just finished the form and i just went submitted it and it said you received it um excellent i just want to say thank you for having everybody on the section and then and then with the the whole convention. I have to almost most of the sessions, some of them kind of can do everyone, but almost all, a lot of them. And I just want to say for all of the hard work you guys did, I pre appreciate it. And thank you for having me for this convention. And Alliance is working hard. So if anybody needs any um, assistance with technology or anything, let um, facilitator Jamie know at jamie.libin Libin at the arc of Virginia.org or Ms. Tanya. Or um, Miss Lucy, they have your email, so like they said, they can email you. And um, I just want to say I'm really proud to be a part of this and be a part of Alliance. And I really appreciate all the stories given today. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, I've got to hang us up, y'all, because there's a one o'clock that I have to open another Zoom room, and I can't have more than one room open. Um, okay. okay, bye everybody. Thank you. Please fill out the satisfaction survey. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day, Tanya. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.